Hello everyone, welcome back to the YouTube channel and today we're back for the next, the weekly sports show episode, episode 7 today. I hope you're all doing well. We have a few things I'd like to discuss on today's episode. Obviously the FA Cup final took place on the weekend, taking it all the way down to penalties, being a nil-nil game. Mason Mount missing a very important penalty leading to... Um, I can't even pronounce his name. The young lad, uh, I believe he's a fullback. I think he's a fullback um, replacement for uh, Robertson. Uh, perfect penalty, well placed, brilliant. <clears throat> and full credit to him lifting the trophy. Klopp currently doing the double with City dropping points in the Premier League against West Ham. Beneficial for West Ham, of course, because now... We have to win instead. But if we drew, we still could have gone to the Europa League. But now if we lose or draw and West Ham win against Brighton, they will be in the Europa League and we'll be playing Europa Conference League. Just stepping back onto the City thing. Now City have a huge last game of the season as they have to win, as Liverpool have two games left. And if they win, they go, I think, a point behind City again. And then, of course, whoever wins or loses will decide between the two of them to become the Premier League champion. I still have high hopes that City will win. I just think they had an off day the other day. And West Ham are not to be taken lightly. Bohm was brilliantly placed to take around the keeper and to just get in a good position to score. Um, unfortunately, for Kufal to get their own goal. But, you know, it's just it happens in football. Anyone who's writing City off or who writes West Ham off are just silly. I think West Ham will get Europa League football next season, as I believe will either... I can't see us winning Palace, because Palace, again, they pulled a good result back the other day. I think we'll draw or lose. I don't think we'll win. But I think West Ham will get a, a, a tough win against Brighton, because Brighton, again, are no easy team. But I think West Ham will win and leading towards playing in the Conference League. Um... And so, yes, um, Champions League spots, I think, will obviously go to City, Liverpool, Chelsea, and I think Arsenal will get it. I think Tottenham will just about lose because if Arsenal win their next game before Sunday, they'll go above Tottenham and it's just simply in their hands. Tottenham do have only Norris to play now, so in theory, it's easier for them going forward because that's a given. So it's simply in Arsenal's hands to mess up. In regards to, obviously, us, I think... Um, the Europa League and Conference League are just basically decided. Arsenal and Tottenham, it is going to be tough, but I still believe Arsenal will edge it slightly. Even though Tottenham have a bit of a bit, so a bit better about them, Arsenal have been clinical this season and proven a lot of people wrong. So I'd be I, I'd be happy to watch either of them in the Champions League next season. Speaking of you know things happening around the world, Lewandowski has officially announced that he wants to leave this season in regards to. Um, just not enjoying his time at Bayern Munich now. He wants to go for Barcelona. He wants to be out now and not wait till next summer. The board are being a bit dickish with him and playing around and basically holding him hostage because he has a contract. Why would you want to keep hold of a player that will not perform for you? I never get it. I get he's got a contract. I get he signed it. But what he's done for your club, Lewandowski's made your club what it is to this day. Let him go. Let him go play for Barcelona. Let him go do something new. I would love to see Lewandowski play for a different team. Let, I mean, joining Barcelona would be incredible. To see him do that would be phenomenal. And I think it could truly change what happens next season. But on the other hand, Mbappe has confirmed before he joins the national team in June, he will have have confirmed where he's going, staying at PSG or going to Real Madrid. I think it's a given he's going to Real because apparently the only thing that's holding it back is image rights. So I think him joining Venetius and Benzema with Rodrigo as backup is going to be brilliant for that team. And especially, as I said, if they get lower, joining the likes of Ferran Torres, Aubameyang, Depay, Traore, uh, Fati, uh, all in that front players, I think it will be truly incredible. Uh, with De Jong, obviously, 90% chance of leaving. Not necessarily on to United, but he's definitely most likely to be leaving. As they've also discussed Puig, who may or may not be a Barcelona player next season. So they're looking at options on who could bring the most money in from departures. And of course, it's also down to the fact of will Man United pay 70, 80 million for De Jong? 
there's a lot to take in, there's a lot to discuss, there's a lot to think about. You know, Griezmann set to Atletico Madrid, Suarez has left Atletico Madrid with Ruben Neves crying after the game yesterday, so obviously set to leave, and I would love to see him join Manchester United. Mark Noble leaves after 16 years at West Ham United, respected by a grateful hug from Guardiola. Class showing class. And I'm, you know, I don't know if he's retiring or he's just leaving West Ham. I hope he leaves the Premier League and shows full respect how much West Ham meant to him. We see every time that guy comes on the pitch how much he respects and plays for the badge. Something of which we don't see more and more these days. Once your players like Messi and Ronaldo and Ibrahimovic lead the uh, football, you know, these guys have been doing it for such a long time. I mean, loyalty like Noble, I'm saying, like, you know, like your Totties who stayed at Roma his entire life. Uh, Philip Lahm, who was at Bayern Munich his entire life. Barcelona being your Alibas, your Alaveses, your Iniestas, your Javis. Those players who stick around for such long periods of time. Schweinsteiger at Bayern. The list goes on. Loyalty is a huge big issue in football in modern day if it's not going your way if the results aren't working if you're not getting trophies look at Kane for example loyalty is in his blood he's been true to what he said he wants to win trophies he's back in the possible Champions League next season you know they failed in the conference uh, league this season so there's a lot and lot they need to work on but if Harry Kane can stick around for one more season there's so much potential in his game but it depends how long will Sun stick around for as well. Um, it's also great to say, I want to say Leicester are getting obviously a lot better. You can see why they did so bad this season uh, in comparison of what they should be doing. Madison massively missed Barnes and Vardy, the three players that define what Leicester is, came back you know, in the last couple of games. Madison's been here and there, but Vardy was out for a few months. Barnes has been in and out again. So they're back. They destroyed... Um, Norwich, Watford, I think, the other day, and, you know, an incredible, incredible result. Speaking of Watford, Ben Foster has officially decided to leave the team after six years involved with them. An incredible keeper and obviously destined to join someone else. Will he stay in the Premier League? Maybe he's set to come back to Man United. You never know. Um, it's obviously rumoured we were after Sam Johnson. But, but would Ben Foster want to come to Man United and he'll never play? I think not. I think he'll go and play in a different league. Um, but again, it depends on how much he enjoys staying and playing in England. So I think a big factor of it was going back to the championship, I just don't think was working. The constant change in management was never going to be good for the team and the morale. So a lot's taken for Ben, but I'm obviously looking forward to seeing who he joins next season. Obviously, thinking about other players, we are linked with Kante, who is a very good player who I'd love to see at Man United. But obviously, if you're talking about money-wise, I think Neves is a better option because of what he brings and because he's slightly younger and I think he'd be slightly cheaper as well. But obviously, I'd take either or because they're both fantastic players. And of course, as I said, the weekend is rocking up to the Premier League's final predictions. Week 38, exciting times, you know, a lot to play for with Norwich and Watford both relegated. Will it be Leeds? Will it be Burnley? Will it be Everton? I think Everton are almost safe. Uh, but you never know. You absolutely never know. If Leeds and Burnley win and Everton lose, Everton are relegated. Um, and there's only those three in danger. <laughs> And we obviously spoke about the, the top of the table clashes that are obviously to take place. Um, uh, I think we're going to have one of the greatest summers of transfers in a very long time. I'm intrigued to see when Newcastle do in the summer. I'm just intrigued to see the likes of who Liverpool bring in. You know, Haaland played his uh, last game the other day, a great celebration and send-off for him, uh, relegating her from the process as they won 2-1 as Haaland smashed up a penalty. And yeah, you know, the world of football is incredible at the moment with so much going on. So many transfers in the air like Haaland, Mbappe, Lewandowski, three of the great strikers in the world moving in the same summer. We've also Origi set to sign up AC Milan. AC Milan just love bringing in those strikers who just are really good. Your Giroud, your Zlatan, your Origi, you got Lau. Um, 
you get the point. So many incredible strikers going to AC Milan to try and solidify their place in Serie A to win back-to-back titles if they can. I know the season's not over yet, but I still believe they'll lift the title this season uh, after a wonderful set of performances. I don't think Zlatan may stick around because he's not really doing much for the team. It's more Giroud and Lau who are bringing the contributions and the teamwork and the hard work and obviously throughout the rest of the team. Um, it's been built over so long and it's been great to see. Uh, but yeah, that's about it for today. Let me know your thoughts down below on some of the transfer news we had to talk about today. Who do you think is going to win the Premier League, Champions League the week after? Who do you think will lift the Champions League? We all know, and I think it will be the same. Real Madrid, we have obviously the Conference League and the Europa League set to take place, I think, the same weekend. And obviously, if you do not know, Nottingham Forest defeated Sheffield United in the first leg of the semi finals of the Championship playoffs. So, who will it be, Sheffield United or Forest? Luton or Huddersfield. I'm excited to see what goes down between them. Obviously, stay up to date with the League One playoffs, League Two playoffs, as obviously Sunderland and Wickham go head to head in the final of the League One playoffs. And I've not been keeping up to date with League Two, but of course, it'll be still interesting to see who goes up. My picks was on Port Vale, but we'll have to see if that comes into fruition. Thanks for joining. Stay up to date with the videos. And of course, see you in the next one. Goodbye.